Hey everyone, today I want to talk about the upcoming chapter of Tales Across the Line High Owl. High Owl will be coming out later this year in June. I was invited to a virtual preview event that allowed me early access of the chapter and I want to share my first impression with you all. I will keep things spoiler free as I myself also didn't want to be spoiled, uh, so I only did the prologue quest and ran around the zone. So the prologue quest was very interesting. It felt like it did an amazing job at introducing the characters, introducing the theme and the bad guys and really making you want more. Um, so I'm really, really excited to play through the full zone story later this year um, and see what it's all about. Because as they promised, um, it really seems like it's going to be completely different from the previous years. Not really doom and gloom, the world's going to end, but um, peace talks that might be stopped or maybe not stopped. We will have to see and find out. Um, so as I entered the city uh, in High Isle, it was absolutely such an amazing medieval uh, vibe that I got from the city. Um, I just ran around for a little bit. Uh, the buildings were very pretty. Um, what I can say is that there is a notable house inside the city that might even be Sweetwater Cascades. Um, that's how gorgeous it was. I just, I went in there thinking it was maybe a classic home. I didn't see that it was a notable home yet. And I just kept discovering more and more and more. Um, so I'm really looking forward to seeing whenever that book is going to be on sale. Um, and potentially buying that. Um, so within the city and not just outside the city, there's these gorgeous statues. And um, I was grouped up with a few people and we kept just running around to be like, oh, wow, this is amazing. This is gorgeous. Um, <laughs> so I, I really enjoyed just discovering everything in the city. Um, the crafting area is also very pretty. Um, I really like that everything was very well put together it is inside um but it's it's a very cute cozy crafting area which i really really liked um so then i obviously had to run around the entire zone discovering all there was to discover so far and something that stood out to me was the sunflower fields i was absolutely truly in love with those there are a bunch of them, um, but at the same time, in some areas, it really felt very Mediterranean, as if I was on the coastline of Italy or Greece, um, which was absolutely just, it was just such an amazing change of scenery, and it really worked, it worked really well. Um, there were also these kind of hobbit-like villages that's just so amazingly pretty, and... I really hope they're going to make one of those smaller houses um, an actual obtainable house because they're just too cute. I need one for myself. Uh, it's like a fisher's village with with these little huts and it's, it's just absolutely gorgeous and amazing. And I'm rambling so much about housing and aesthetics, but personally, I always love it when I can just walk around in a game and just be wowed by everything. So that's what High Owl 100% did for me. When entering the city, there is one character that I feel like has the potential to become one of the most loved characters in ESO, or maybe the most hated one. Uh, we'll really see how their storyline plays out. And I'm, I'm very curious. I'm very, very curious. Uh, another thing that I was really happy to see was that there is a recurring character from other storylines that made a comeback. Um, obviously, I won't tell you which one it is, uh, but you'll find out soon enough. So I'm really excited about that. Then I also did the Tales of Tribute card game. Um, I was a little bit worried I wasn't going to like it because I'm I'm not someone who really does this kind of side stuff uh, in games, and I'm not the best at card games usually. So I was a little bit worried about that. Um, but there's an interesting quest, which may I say an amazingly voiced character um, that allows you to really slowly learn the game. Uh, they explain things very well, so you do have to take some time to actually learn how everything works. Um, 
And then after that, they require you to play a game against um, someone who isn't very high level of the NPCs. And it's a very inter intriguing card game, actually, because there's multiple ways to win. And you have to keep an eye on which cards your opponent has. Because I thought I was winning easy peasy lemon squeezy. And all of a sudden, my opponent was catching up in points. And um, you win if you have 40 points. Um, and in the end, they had 38, where and when I got 42. So I only barely won. And that made it a lot of fun to me. So I'm really excited to explore more and do more of those. And maybe even play a game against some of you. I also had a look at the companions. I mainly had a look at Ember, the Khajiit, because that's the one that I'm most interested in. Um, if you have seen my streams, you see that I always forget to take out my companions uh, and I rarely ever use them. Um, but I am actually really excited to play with Ember because her voice lines are really good. I really liked having her around me as I played. Um, it's also great that she's not so morally on high ground so that means that there's a, a few more options that you can do without immediately offending her then um i'm really excited to be doing volcanic fans as well uh they're kind of more like the usual world events uh rather than black boots uh, deadlands portals um i feel like a lot of people didn't really like the deadlands portals all that much so i for one am pretty happy that they brought back the regular world events that are marked on the map with the little uh, swords crossed when it's active. Um, so I'm really, really excited to be trying more of those. Uh, I wasn't able to actually find one that was active when I was on. Um, but I did walk around in the active one and it looked really, really intriguing. I personally love the flamey lava vibe, so it's right up my alley. The world bosses are also very interesting. Uh, we managed to find one, and uh, we were three people. Not geared up very well, but, you know, we made an attempt. And honestly, the bosses, the, the bosses kicked her ass. It was a very strong boss. So that's definitely going to be super fun to, to, to try out when the chapter goes live. See if we can get a little group together. So Hi'al also comes with an entirely new trial called the Dread Sail Reef. Um, I won't spoil any of the fights. I will... Uh, I, the only thing that I really want to say is that the vibe is amazing. The atmosphere is great. Um, I went in there and I looked around and just the way it's it's made, the, the, the whole design of the trial is just amazing. It really feels like I stepped into a Pirates of the Caribbean movie or something. And I ha now have to fight all these things. Um on ships and around ships and I guess that's as much as I go into, I'm going to say about it. Um, I will 100% want to run this trial when it's live as well and by that time I will probably have forgotten most of it so let's go. <laughs> a final thing that I want to add is that there is now a tab for accessibility settings. Now, I don't think there's a lot new in there because I accidentally clicked it because I was very curious. You know, I love accessibility in games. It makes me very happy. So I clicked it and um, it basically just turned on gamepad mode. So I don't know where that's going to go. I'm hoping that they will make some change in the menus to make accessibility settings a little bit more easy to access. Um... But just the fact that there is a menu option for accessibility in the game right now makes me even very happy. Um, so yeah, that's it. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to drop by on stream. Uh, I will answer them to the best of my abilities. Uh, and I'm really, really excited for this new chapter. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you next video. Bye-bye.